Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting non-standard equation. I guess we could also call these transcendental equations. But the tricky part is this is pretty non-standard. X and Y are real numbers, by the way. Let me tell you that ahead of time. And we're going to be solving an equation with two variables. A single equation, two variables. It's not Diophantine equation. It's not number theory. This is pure algebra, which is my favorite, by the way. Even though I like number theory, you know, they kind of go hand in hand sometimes. Anyways, I'll be presenting two methods. And let's start with the first one. And you're gonna to get to decide which one you like better. Please let us know in the comment section down below. So for my first method, I'm gonna go ahead and put the y plus one over y on the left-hand side because I'm about to turn this into a quadratic equation. Multiply both sides by y. And you get y squared plus one equals two sine x as the coefficient of y. We multiply by y and let's put everything on the same side keeping the two sine x in parentheses not to get confused because i want that to be emphasized basically that's the coefficient of y right with the negative sign of course so now notice that this is quadratic in y right and you're like why <laughs> think about it and since it's quadratic we can solve it using the quadratic formula but guess what you're in for a surprise so if we use the quadratic formula, we get negative b, which is 2 sine x, plus minus the square root of b squared. Remember the formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. They even made up some songs to help people memorize, but I don't think they are helpful. You just memorize it. Anyways, that's my personal opinion. Uh, negative b inside the radical, you have b squared minus 4ac, which is the discriminant or delta. It's going to be 4 sine squared x minus 4ac. a is 1, c is 1, so it's just 4. Okay, and all of that is divided by 2a, which is 2. Awesome. Now, this can be factored inside the radical, so we can go ahead and factor out a 4, but that becomes a 2 on the outside. And now we have inside the radical sine squared minus 1. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. Why? <laughs> okay, the problem is 1 minus sine squared is known as what? Cosine squared, right? What about its opposite? Of course, sine squared minus 1 from here is negative cosine squared. That's the problem. We have a negative number or a non-positive number inside the radical. What does that mean? Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. 2 sine x plus minus 2 times square root of negative cosine squared x divided by 2. And of course, we can divide everything by 2 and write this as sine x plus minus the square root of negative cosine squared x. Well, can you square root cosine squared? Yes, with the absolute value, you're going to get two values. But what about negative cosine squared x? Hmm. If you think about it, cosine squared cannot be negative. Negative cosine squared cannot be positive. So we have something that can be positive under the radical sign, which brings us to the issue of complex numbers. Well, even though this channel is not about complex numbers, Sometimes we hit complex numbers uh, for certain reasons, but if you like complex numbers or if you would like to learn more about them, go ahead and check out my other channel, A plus BI, which is also how we represent complex numbers, right? And ask a lot of questions. Anyways, that's a different story. Now everything is divided by two, so I have my Y value. So how do you write negative cosine squared? So we have the following rule. If A is greater than or equal to zero. And of course, I don't want it to be zero. How about this? If a is greater than zero, then the square root of negative a can be written as, because negative a is negative, we can write this as square root of a times i. And i would be the square root of negative one uh, because i squared is negative one in the complex world. That's something that you should never ever forget. And I'm pretty sure at some point you're gonna see complex numbers. So now, based on this, we can write our value as follows. y equals sine x plus minus, the square root of cosine squared is gonna be cosine x with the plus minus sine, but we already have that, but there's gonna be an i, so let me go ahead and write it this way. This is how most books, textbooks will write complex numbers. Instead of a plus pi, they're gonna write it a as a plus ib because that kind of conforms 
to the trigonometric form, which is cosine theta plus I sine theta. And some people abbreviate it as with the CIS, but, you know, that's not very common, I guess, but I've seen it. So here, uh, cosine and sine are the, you know, trigonometric ratios of the angle that our number makes with the real axis, which is known as the x-axis, and this is the imaginary axis, this is the theta, it's measured in a positive direction, which is counterclockwise, so on and so forth. But again, that's a long story, you can go ahead and check my lecture videos on my other channel, A plus BI. Now let's get back to this. What is that supposed to mean? Didn't we just say at the beginning that y and x are real numbers? Yes, really. So, but this is a complex number. Well, depends, right? So if you, do, if you want it to be a real number, then the imaginary part needs to be, poof, disappear. And how can you make that? By setting the imaginary part equal to zero, of course. So if you have a complex number whose imaginary part is zero, then that number is real, okay? So this gives us cosine x equals zero. What does that mean? It means a couple of different things. For example, this means x is equal to pi over two, or 3 pi over 2, or you can also call that, I guess, negative pi over 2. And you could add multiples of 2 pi, obviously, and keep rotating around the unit circle, which is going to bring you to the same point over and over. But you can do that if you want. But if you're looking for solutions between 0 and 2 pi, that's what it is. So we got the solutions for x, sort of. But let's go ahead and take a look at another thing. If cosine x is 0, this either means sine x is 1 or sine x is negative 1. Again, from the Pythagorean theorem or the formula, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. When I just say sine squared, I know this doesn't make sense because there needs to be an argument like sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1 all the time. Even for complex values of x, this is true. But what is the coolest part? Remember our original equation, you probably forgot, right? I forgot it too. What was it? It was 2 sine x equals y plus 1 over y. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take note here so we don't forget it next time. So now this is our original problem. And now we know that sine x is equal to 1. So you can just go ahead and plug it in. That just means y plus 1 over y is equal to 2, which is super duper nice. And if you simplify this, you're going to realize, to keep a long story short, from here you only get y equals 1. Even though it's quadratic, it's a perfect square. You'll see it if you do it. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you. So I don't do all the work, right? Come on, you got to do something. If sine x is equal to negative 1, then I get negative 2 for y plus 1 over y. And on the opposite side of the number line, this gives us y equals negative 1. So it's kind of cool. We got the x values and the y values. But of course, we used the stipulation that x and y are both real numbers. They are not complex or imaginary. Okay? When I say complex, understand non-real complex, okay? Thank you. Now, the second solution comes in. Ta-da-da. There's a better way to approach it, right? Maybe not necessarily better. You get to decide, okay? I'm going to present it to you. Let me know what you think because your opinion matters. That's the only thing that matters, right? What you think of this video. Please let me know what you think. So anyways, remember, if X is real, and of course that's true for y too, but let's just focus on x now, then sine x needs to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, right? And if you double both sides, or everything, I mean, then we get a different inequality. 2 sine x must be between negative 2 and 2 inclusive. But 2 sine x is the same as y plus 1 over y. Hmm. That means y plus 1 over y needs to be between these two numbers. What does that mean, though? Well, here's the thing. If you take this, okay, this means y plus 1 over y minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Or if you just make a common denominator, y squared minus 2y plus 1 over y is less than or equal to 0. Don't cross multiply. That's a mistake. Just be careful. You can do it after you check something. Now, notice that this is y minus 1 quantity squared divided by y less than or equal to 0. Uh-oh. If y is positive, think about it. If y is positive, then y minus 1 squared needs to be less than or equal to 0. I got stuck. Sorry about that. <laughs> Brain fry. So what does that mean? Well, perfect square cannot be negative, but it can be 0. Yay. This means y equals 1. And y equals 1 satisfies y is greater than 0, so we get a check on that one. y equals 1 is a valid solution. You see, by using an inequality, we can solve an equation, which is great, right? 
Now look at the other piece of this inequality. I mean this one. So y plus 1 over y is greater than or equal to negative 2. This is going to be very similar. Let me just tell you. This is going to give you the following. And now think about it. If y is positive, there's nothing interesting about it because it's not going to work. So if y is negative, though, this gives us y plus 1 squared because you're going to multiply both sides by a negative number. And you're going to get the following inequality, which implies y is equal to negative 1. And it's true because y, we assume that if y is less than 0, this is true. So it's good. Everything is checked. We get two solutions, so on and so forth. You get the idea? Because I don't think I have a solution from all from all five. Yeah, I have, but those are complex solutions. I, I don't remember if I prompted for real solutions, but you know, all from alpha is just a large language model and it sometimes sucks. Anyways, <laughs> this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI and bye-bye.